asking this, just so that we have it in our back pocket. Okay, that's fine. All right, and so here's what we're gonna do first. I wanna run through a quick little procedure, guys, on what you need to expect when you come into this classroom. You'll probably notice that we are, are kind of borrowing a classroom from someone, else, from someone else. This isn't my normal classroom, okay? This is 533, it's part kind of our, of our normal academy area, but we need to uh, understand how a few of the things are gonna work in this, all right? And the first thing is how we're gonna do the whole, the whole sanitizing procedure. So today was a little bit of an outlier where you have to come in, you go to wipe your desk down, right? Normally you're not going to have to do that. But what I want you to do when you come in, and it's kind of a district expectation, is when you walk into the rooms, just take a quick squirt of hand sanitizer, all right? Some of us, I know, are literally coming from like that door where you've got a squirt of hand sanitizer, the this door, all right? But we, we're going to double down anyway, because some of us are coming from clear across the building, all right? So when you come in, just quickly hand sanitize, all right? Now if you look around, you'll see that we got hand sanitizer here, that's kind of your station. So if you ever have to mess with your mask or do anything, or you need to touch like the classroom utensil, like, hey, if I have to come and touch this marker, a good idea to think about is like sanitize in, sanitize out, right? Before I touch that marker, I sanitize real quick. I use whatever I need to do with this marker. And then when I put it back, I sanitize my hands again. All right, that eliminates getting crap on your hands. And the reason why that matters is because we all have a tendency as I'm looking around, I see us all touching our face, okay? That's the biggest deal. If you touch your face, that's how coronavirus or COVID-19 can possibly get in your body and infect you because it comes in through mucous membranes, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, okay? So that's why we wear the masks to help things from getting in there. But also if we're filtering all that stuff and then we start messing with our mask and putting our hands up all over our eyes and stuff, that's where it gets a little dangerous. So to keep everyone safe, that's just how we're gonna roll, okay? Um, a few other things to think about. These passes over here, um, we're not gonna use these passes. If you need to go to the bathroom, ask me and I will write you a paper pass so you can throw it away so that not everyone's handling the passes and everything's cool, all right? Something to think about is if you leave the classroom, you need to wash your hands if you're in the bathroom. That should just be a given, guys. We're not animals, all right? But also, sanitize in and sanitize out. When you leave, sanitize. When you come back, sanitize. Pretty sweet, pretty simple. I know that you guys have heard this over and over and over again, right? It's been beaten to death. You guys spent all day yesterday hearing this stuff. So I don't want to be a broken record. That's kind of the baseline of what we need to expect and a few things that we're going to think about as we move forward. So getting all that stuff out of the way so that we can move on a little bit, we're going to uh, jump into exactly what we need to be thinking about and expecting for this class. So guys, like I said before, this is foundation of a lot of public safety. So there are two cool things about this class. Number one, it is not like technically one of your curriculum requirements, right? It's not math, it's not science, it's not English, it's not history, all right? This is something that's really specifically tailored to what you guys want, right? That's what this whole freshman seminar thing was about last year, when you guys went through and did all of your explorations and careers and the different pathways and what academy you should join and everything else. This is taking that, but personalizing it to what you guys want, right? Each and every one of you was placed here because there's some reason why you want to be in this field in some way or another. Now, there's a whole wide array of different careers and different things, and we'll spend some time exploring that. But the cool thing about this class is we get to apply all those things. So we'll get to see police officers with the K-9 unit. We'll get to talk to lawyers, all right? Along with that, we'll be looking at things like crime scenes. We'll be looking at things like police body cameras. We'll be talking about where the rubber hits the road, the law, and what a real, actual career in different fields in this area actually look like. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty immersive. We're going to have a lot of fun. All right. Sometimes we're going to see how it works, but I want to bring over some of my crime scene dummies. We might be doing some crime scene investigation stuff. We're going to explore a lot of different ways to how to apply these things. All right. So a brief overview. This is how my class works. All right. This is kind of a Mr. Boyd class. Whatever I teach. This is how things kind of look, all right? What you need to know is when you come in the door, all right, if you're in any one of my classes, this one included, all right, you get the first five minutes. And what that means is I give you the first five to come in, to relax, decompress, figure out what's going on, take care of any of your business, because I know that five minutes is not long enough to talk to this all over time, right? So you come in, and during those first five, that's when I'm going to take attendance, that's when I'm going to set everything up. As you know, I'm moving rooms and doing a bunch of stuff, so i got to get my life organized, too. During that first five, guys, that's your time. You, get, you can talk, you can run through your, san, your sanitizing procedure, you can be on your phone, 
I really don't care. I'm gonna make sure everyone's here. And then after that five minutes is up, I'm gonna say, hey, first five is over. Let's put our phones away and we're gonna jump into the day. And that's our cue. Everyone just slides the phones away and we're gonna jump in and go. All right, so I just wanna give you that decompression time, allow you to catch up. That's when you can text your friends or anything else. And then uh, we jump into class. Now, during that first five, we'll also usually have like a learning target, success criteria. Guys, you've heard these terms, right? They've been pounded into you as freshmen, okay? But I'll usually throw it up on this board like, hey, this is what we're gonna do today, and these are the things that are gonna meet them. And then at the end of class, we usually come back and say, hey, did we actually learn this? Question ourselves to make sure everything's good to go. All right, so apart from the first five, what to expect in class? Like I said before, the cool thing about this class is it's going to be really fluid. Some days, we might be talking about what the heck is law, or what are the three different branches of criminal justice. Or, the next day, we might be doing a crime scene investigation and looking at body cam footage of someone getting run over by a police officer. And asking ourselves, was this correct? How did this happen? And how does this apply and change our career? All right? So, we're going to look at a bunch of different things and have a bunch of different examples, and we're going to make sure that we take in all those opportunities. But just as a baseline, we're going to cover things like news, we're going to do activities and notes. Oh, excuse me, and notes, we're going to do videos, uh, assignments, usually have like an exit slip, and we'll all work together to make those things happen. Now, looking at this, all right, we have to understand exactly how the, the class is going to work, and we're going to go through the syllabus today and back that up so that we all understand what's going on. But before we do that, I've already kind of covered our classroom expectations. Um, one thing I want to remind you guys, touching of the face is like the number one thing that can put you in danger, right? Like, here's how this works. If these glasses have been coughed on by someone with COVID-19, right? The only way this is a threat to me is if I take the germs that are on this and I touch my face, right? And I put it in one of my mucous membranes. So if you want to be safe, right? To be safe, don't be touching all over your face. And if you're going to move your mask, here's what I would suggest. Because I also, right, I'm talking like all day long with this mask on. Sometimes I'm going to have to move it. So if you ever have to move your mask or, hey, if you're taking a drink, right, because the only way that you can drink water now, Gish, is by having a water bottle. I like to drink my coffee, right? Here's an example. When I move my mask to take a drink, make sure I'm six feet away from everybody. Sanitize my hands real quick, all right? When you grab your mask, Take it off your, your ear, make sure you're away from everyone, you take a quick drink, and then when you put your mask back on, try to avoid touching where like all of your spit droplets are, right? Take it back up, put it around your ear, you can put it all back in place, but notice I touch all over that mask, right? So then, before I touch anything else in the classroom, boom. If you have to stand up and walk over here and hand sanitize, that's cool, all right? I don't care if you stand up and you go sanitize. That's, that's a safety thing. I have no issue with that. I'm not going to call you out, okay? All right. Oh, and one other thing. Sometimes I feel like I have to remind you. Um, I even remind my juniors and seniors. But uh, guys, we're not, we're not kiddos anymore. So when you're in here, if you're like hanging around and poking the dude next to you and jumping all over and touching everyone, I'm just going to come over and be like, hey, are we in kindergarten? Like, don't be touching all over everyone. We don't want to share germs. It's like a number one. Try to stay a little bit physically distant, all right? That doesn't mean that you can't walk up and be talking to your friend or even, like, touch them on the shoulder. But if you're, like, getting all handsy, that's just not cool. So don't do it. All right, so now, now we've got all kind of that boring stuff out of the way, um, here's what I want to do. Because you guys really don't know me because you haven't had me before and we're kind of in a unique situation, all right? And I want to get to know you because in this class, we're going to learn from each other and we're really going to kind of work together. That's why we're paired in groups and a bunch of different stuff, all right? I want to introduce myself. I want you to know who I am and what matters to me and why I'm here teaching you guys at, uh, at GISH. So I am going to pull up a little PowerPoint to show you who I am. Now, yesterday, this absolutely freaked this projector out. So now, one thing I want you to know is that, like I said before, I'm going to reiterate again, it's not my room. So if we're working sometimes with some handicap facilities, right? We got this tiny little speaker. You saw usually on Blair Music when people come in, I love music. We're gonna create a class playlist so that everyone can have some suggestions to play music in here, all right? Um, but beyond that, all right, we're gonna kind of work with what we got. I understand that this is a weird screen that like doesn't even fit the projector, but we're gonna be flexible and we're gonna be kind, and that's just how we're gonna roll. 
All right, so there's me. Um, I'm Mr. Boyd, in case you haven't caught on yet. All right, there's a couple pictures of me at my wedding my, in the Continental Divide. So who am I? Um, these are my roots. I'm from Gearing, Nebraska. So guys, Gearing, Nebraska is way out in the Nebraska camp, like way out west. I'm about 10 minutes from the Wyoming border. For reference, if you take a look here, we are, we don't have a pointer. All right, so Grand Island is about right there. All right, this is where my hometown is, right there. So I'm way far away from home, um, but I was born and raised in Gearing. I graduated from Gearing High School in 2015. Um, after I graduated, I attended UNL. Um, I studied history and education. When I was in high school, I was super involved in a bunch of stuff, um, sports, speech, mock trial, um, football, basketball, um, wrestling, uh, pretty much everything. So we were kind of a, we were a class B school, so everybody did everything, and it was uh, really sweet. Um, at UNL, I was an RA, so I spent a lot of time at UNL doing like recruitment stuff and managing residence halls. Um, I was a residence hall supervisor. You can see right here, this is my first residence hall staff. Um, so I had a lot of fun at UNL. If you have any questions about college or UNL especially, um, I did a lot of stuff with like recruitment and different things. So I can give you the real truth of what college looks like at UNL and what to expect and what to think. If you ever want to talk about college, feel free. Let me know. All right, beyond that, um, this is actually, these are pictures from where I'm from. This is Scottsbluff National Monument. Um, this is kind of right out my back door. So if you walk about two miles outside my back door, you get to, actually specifically, you get to there. These are two internet pictures and that upper right-hand one, that's from when I was hiking there earlier this year. Um, so it's an awesome place. I really love my hometown. I love going back west. I would highly suggest going out and visiting there. There's Chimney Rock and a bunch of different stuff. It is a little bit of a smaller town, but it's pretty sweet. All right, so something else that's really important to me is my family. Guys, I'm a family man. I grew up in a big family, right? I have a family of seven. I have four little sisters, all right? And out of those four little sisters, three of them are actually, I mean, I guess four of them, all four are still in school. One of them is a senior at UNL, and then my three littlest sisters, one is a sophomore, one's an eighth grader, and one's a seventh grader. So I still have a lot of roots back home. I still have a huge family that's going through, uh, going through life. My extended family is huge. This is a picture from uh, my wedding a couple years ago, and this is about 60% of the family. You couldn't fit them all in one picture, so it's kind of crazy. Um, this is my close family right here. If you take a look, that is one of my sisters. That's Hannah, that's Becky, that's Afia and Rachel. There's me and my wife back there, and then uh, there's my dad. And my mom's over here just up the top, so. But yeah, we, uh, we're pretty close. I love my family. It's a big thing, a big part of me. Um, this is also Thanksgiving. Holidays are a big thing. Um, we get together on 4th of July. Thanksgiving, spend a lot of time together and have some pretty big uh, um, family events. Uh, another big portion of my life that kind of defines about who I am and my identity is my wife. Um, her name is Jenna. We started dating in high school. It seems like we've been dating pretty much forever now. Um, I think we celebrated like 10, 8 or 10 years together. Um, earlier this year. So we started dating in high school. She's going to be a physical therapist. She's actually studying at UNMC in Kearney to be a physical therapist. We live in Kearney, so I drive every day down here to Grand Island to teach you guys. Um, here are a couple pictures of us. That's from our wedding. That's from Halloween a couple years ago. Um, and then this is down in, uh, in Lincoln. She loves puppies. Okay, That's one big thing about her. She loves puppies, and we actually just got one in July. Um, and that's our puppy right there. Her name is Juniper. So we had to throw the obligatory puppy pictures in. We got her this year. She is 10 or 11 weeks now. So she was a little tiny baby when we got her. She was only six weeks old. Um, she's a black lab, and hopefully she's going to be a, a good bird dog because um, I love to hunt. She's, uh, she's already pretty smart. So I'm excited about that. All right, so speaking of hunting, some of my passions. These are things that I like to do, guys, things that make me me. Um, when I'm not in here teaching you guys at school, right? I love being outside, hunting, fishing, hiking, snowboarding, working, all right? These are a couple pictures from the mountains in Wyoming. I love to go to the mountains. They're like my favorite spot ever, okay? Um, all right, some more pictures. Um, I like to kayak a lot. It's something my wife and I do together. I fish a lot for my kayak as well. Um, this picture from snowboarding in Wyoming. Here's a fishing picture with my cousin, little Joey. Um, this is my family at the lake. 
And then this is actually a picture of instead of going on a like a Caribbean vacation or whatever for a honeymoon, my wife and I actually road trip to Wyoming and we went backpacking in the mountains for three days. Um, we went up into the Grand Teton National Park. And this is a picture of us or of me in front of the lake when we were coming back down. Um, it was kind of crazy. We saw a moose and you have to carry a bear canister and bear spray and a bunch of stuff. So um, it's a fun time. It's something I love doing. Um, I try to do it as often as I can. Another thing I really love, guys, I'm a big sports guy, right? In high school, I played a lot of sports. Um, I love watching sports. I'm especially a football fan, a huge Huskers fan. Here's a couple pictures from um, some of the games. I never missed a home game when I was at UNL. Sadly, um, I was really heartbroken by the announcement that we're not playing this fall. Um, but some things just have to happen. So if you ever want to talk Huskers, I could talk all day. But here, these are a few pictures of like me and my wife um, at games. Here's me and my wife when we were at the Oregon game in 2017. We got to the front row. We waited in line for eight and a half hours to get there. Um, it was insane. Probably wouldn't do it again, but it was an awesome, awesome time. Uh, something else I really like, concerts. I'm a huge music guy, right? We have a class playlist and stuff. Um, my wife and I do that a lot together. We go to concerts. Um, not recently, but we like to go to a lot of different concerts. Red Rocks in Colorado is our favorite concert venue. And then here's a picture of us at Grand Teton. Some more of my passions, guys. Things I like to do. I like working on cars a lot, especially Toyotas. Um, I've built a 400 in the past. I have a Tacoma now that I work on. Um, I love spending time with my family. These are my three littlest sisters after we did a park tour of our hometown on our bikes called the Tour of Gearing. Um, it was a great time, and it's something that I really like doing and something I try to do as much as I can. So why am I here? What do I ultimately do with GISH? So guys, this is what you need to know about my position. I teach all of the law and public safety pathway classes here at Gitch. So I teach foundations, I teach principles, and then I teach advanced. All right, so you're starting here in foundations. You'll have me next year for principles, and that's when you start getting college credit. Then you'll have me the year after that for advanced. You'll get more college credit, and that's when we start looking at some, some crazy stuff, like crime scenes and shootings and different things to actually learn how to apply the career to real life. All right, um, apart from that, I'm the head mock trial coach. That ties in really, really well with uh, what we do here. So I might be picking you guys' brains for doing the mock trial team. And uh, I'm also the head speech coach this year. So I coach speech here at Gish as well. So hopefully we have a season and all things will go well. All right. So last but not least, guys, my one rule. I pretty much say if you don't get anything from the syllabus or whatever, you'll have that on hand to look at. But if there's one thing that needs to dictate everything you do in this class, it's respect. I know you've probably heard it before. But I want to reiterate it. Respect kind of goes both ways. It goes everywhere, right? It applies to communication, truth, care, responsibility, accountability, everything else. So what does that look like? That means if I respect you, when I come into this class to teach you guys, I'm going to be giving you real world things that apply to this career path. I'm going to be giving you, giving you tools that engage you, right? And that make you want to be. But that goes both ways, right? So if you respect me, that means that you're showing up to class ready to work hard engage, right? It's a positive attitude. Also, you're respecting your classmates. Okay? One of those, one of the first things that people were saying is like, oh, kids aren't going to want to wear a mask. And while some kids, right, have been a little more tough on, you guys are doing an awesome job of demonstrating that respect and following through what we call like three non-negotiables, right? Wearing a mask, sanitizing often, and wearing your IDs. So you guys are doing awesome. Respect should just dictate everything, right? Respect between you and me, respect for yourself, and respect for others. Cool stuff. I don't want to beat a dead horse, all right? There we go. So that is a little bit about me. That's what you need to know about your instructor. I'm going to get to know you guys. Next time we come into class, we're actually going to spend some time getting to know each other so that we understand we're going to work with the groups and different things, kind of touch base a little bit. Um, but that's just a little background to kind of get us started so we can start talking about those things. So we just met me. Let's jump in. We need to talk about the nuts and bolts of this course. Now, Guys, I completely understand. We're gonna be jumping in, and this is gonna be kind of kind of long, or maybe a little bit boring, because you've heard already four of these, right, from yesterday, and you're starting off today with one. But it's important that we cover a few things that are critical for this class in the syllabus, all right? Because, and I'm gonna say this once, but I will say it many more times today, this is your first assignment in this class, all right? Just like almost every other class you have, the back page of this, you're gonna get signed, uh, you and your parents, it's very important that you guys sign because there's a content warning for this class. We're talking about things that apply to law and public safety. So that means we're going to be talking about and maybe looking at some graphic situations, right? 
when it comes to law and public safety, you might have to address things like rape, murder, gun violence, things like that. And so there's kind of a content warning that you need to sign off on, your parents need to sign off on, that hey, we're going to talk about these things, we acknowledge that everything's cool. All right? Also, it's to double check that, hey, everyone reads the syllabus and understand the class expectations. So I'm handing a syllabus out to you guys right now. Each of you should get a copy. If you take a look, flip to the back page right away. That back page is what's going to be your very first homework assignment. And the cool thing about that is it's worth five points. All you have to do is bring that to me and turn it in. You start out with an A in this class. All right? So due on Monday is turning in this back page of the syllabus. Pretty sweet, pretty simple. Awesome. All right, ladies and gents, let's walk through this real quick. I don't want to take too much of your time. I don't want to like beat this to death. All right, we're going to hit the high points. We're not going to walk through every single thing together, but I'm going to reiterate to you guys exactly what you need to pay attention to. All right. So starting off on the very front, we've got the name of the course, my name, our room, specifically for this class, right, and my contact information. Now, guys, here's something that might be a little bit. Um, I'm uncertain for you. Since this isn't my regular room, you might not always be able to come to this door and find me. But you can always find me through email, right? If I split my time between here and Wyandotte, you're definitely going to have to shoot me an email sometime to please get in contact with you. That's awesome. I'll always respond to emails. I have an open door email policy. I'll even respond at night, okay? So make sure to email me, and I will make sure everything is good to go if you have any questions. All right? Um, our course description. Basically, it tells you exactly what to expect from this course. We're exploring this career pathway. We're going to learn the foundations. We're going to talk about what law is when it comes to like the abstract concept of, hey, what the heck is a law, all the way to how do we apply that and how do we get to the point where people are enforcing laws. All right? We're going to talk about those different things um, as we go along. The one piece I want you to pay attention to and I want everyone to look at it right now is the course description. Down below that, there's a little spot that says content warning. That's what I was talking about. All right? In this class, we're going to talk about a few things that are controversial, that are graphic, that might make you feel uneasy. One thing I want you to know is that if any point in, in this class, right, if at any point we're watching something that's graphic or we're talking about these things, number one, you'll always be a warning. You'll be like, hey, this is what we're doing. Okay? And if you don't want to, you can literally just be like, hey, I'm going to turn away right now. Right? Or, hey, I want to sit down the hall real quick. Take a break. That's cool with me. Okay? Because some people, just straight up don't want to watch someone get murdered. And I get that, okay? That might be something that you don't want to do. And that's okay, okay? That's okay. There will always be an alternative assignment if you want to. I'll give you those warnings. Those are the things that you need to understand and be looking out for. All right? So that's our content warning. We're going to come back to that because that, uh, that signature, that waiver there at the bottom, that's going to be part of that whole assignment. And uh, we'll get them to do that later. Um, our, our objective for the class is basically to make prepared and set you up to be successful in the next two levels of this class, all right? Class structure, we already talked about what class looks like. Basically, there's going to be um, tests and quizzes and assignments, discussion posts, a bunch of different things that we do um, that you're going to turn. There's going to be formative work and summative work, right? Formative work and assessments. And just like every other class, those are weighted 80-20. All right, the part that we have to hit hard, rules and expectations. These might be unique to my class. But this is what, what I want you to know for this class specifically, all right? You're not counted tardy in this class, all right, unless you are not in the room when the bell is uh, is ringing, okay? So if you are walking in when the bell rings, I'm not going to count tardy, right? You don't have to be in your seat when the bell rings because you guys kind of have the first five to have that time to yourself. But if you're not in the room when the bell rings, you're going to be counted tardy. Now, well, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of leeway as we're kind of learning and getting ready um, to set up our expectations on this first week. But beyond that, just be looking out. For those different things. All right. Now, I also want you to know that there is some flexibility on that. So, if you had to go talk to your counselor or something, you've got a pass. You walk in during the first five and you say, "Hey, Mr. Wood, I, I was at my counselor." That's cool. You're not going to be tardy, but you got to talk to him. All right. The number one rule you have to think about for this class is, "Hey, run it by Mr. Boyd to make sure it's cool." Right. We're going to talk about our cell phone policy. One of my biggest beliefs is that sometimes 
because school happens in our life. Sometimes life gets in the way of school. So if you have, Lord forbid, right? If this is the situation we live in, if you have a family member in the hospital and you're waiting for a call, you can talk to me and say, hey, Mr. Boyd, I'm waiting for a very important call. If my phone rings, is it okay if I step out and I'll take it for a quick minute? Nine out of 10 times, probably 10 out of 10 times, my answer is yes. All right, but as long as you run it by me, that's cool. If you're just sitting in class, your cell phone goes off and you just answer, hey, what's up? Oh, it's possible. Oh, this report can go out. No, you didn't, you didn't talk to me. I don't know what the heck's going on. All right, as long as you run it by me, things are going to be cool. All right, so make sure you kind of you follow that. And we're going to kind of reiterate that when we get to our cell phone policy. Um, something you need to think about the last page, all right, or the, the bottom of this page. It says, my missing work policy. Basically, it's, hey, if you miss class for any reason, all you have to do is you need to reach out to me and talk to me. Right? I'm not going to reach out to you if you miss class. If you shoot me an email or you come and talk to me in this room and say, hey, Mr. Boyd, I missed yesterday. What do I need to do? I will have a plan. But you have to talk to me. If you just rely on me coming to you, it's not going to happen. You're going to have missing work. All right? So make sure to follow through with that. Um, if you miss school due to activities, make sure you come and you get your makeup work. Pretty simple. Um, technology. Guys, throughout this course, I want you to be thinking about this. We are in a different room, right? This is my home room, so we're going to do a lot of things digitally, and that's cool. You're going to need your Chromebook every day, ready and charge. And we do have quite a few outlets in this room, which is awesome. I'm not going to be a stickler on like, you can't have your chargers plugged in. I don't care if your chargers are plugged in, but you need to make sure that you're being responsible if you're going to bring that Chromebook to the back. All right? Um, beyond technology, uh, cell phones. Guys, here's my cell phone rule. During the first five, I don't care. If you ask me, right? If you ask me and you run it by me and everything's cool, I don't care. But beyond those things, phones should be silenced and out of sight. What do I mean by out of sight? I literally mean like, hey, I don't want to just like see it out on your desk, right? Because half the time, what we'll see is you'll be chilling at your desk and your phone's sitting here and you might not be on it, but if that thing goes off, right, then people can see it and it's a distraction. So all you have to do, I don't even care if it's tucked on your leg, I don't care if it's in your back pocket, I don't care if it's in your backpack, I just want it silenced and out of sight, all right? Pretty simple. Now if you have, like I said, if you have some extenuating circumstance like, Hey, Mr. Boyd, I'm gonna I'm I'm in the running for a job. They're gonna call me to set up an interview during this class period. It's only gonna be like a minute. When it rings, can I go out in the hallway? As long as you run that by me before class or before it happens, or you're like, yeah, okay, no worries. Go out there and then come back and jump right back into class. All right, but you have to get those things by me. All right. Um. Oh, cell phones. So what happens when your cell phone isn't silenced and out of sight? I kind of run by the the three strike policy. Okay. So during class, if I see you on your cell phone, I'll just be like, hey, put that away. No beep. As long as you slide that away, off and out of sight, everything's good. If I catch it a second time, right, and say, hey, that's number two. You have two options. My cue to you is, hey, that's number two. You have two options when you get a second warning. If you get to put it in your backpack, okay, I'll just see it go in your backpack, so it's kind of off and out of sight, it's not a distraction. Or you can just eliminate that distraction, and you'll put it on my desk. No worries there. All right. Now, where we get to the rub is when it happens a third time, because that means you either went, you took it off the desk or you pulled it out of your backpack. All right. Gish, just the, the entire district really says, "Hey, three strikes, that's enough." So I have to send you the office after three strikes. Let's not make that happen. I think it's dumb to go to the office over a cell phone. Half the time you go, and they just say, "They go through it again." And then if you get sent there again, they take it and they make your parents come to get your cell phone. You guys don't want that to happen. All right. So after that second strike. You have plenty enough every class, right, to make sure that you're following and you're meeting those guidelines. All right. What's next? ID badges. You guys know. Wear them all the time. All right. Here's our three non-negotiables. We see it in the room. Always wear your face coverings. Always have your visible IDs. Always sanitize and wash your hands frequently. Pretty sweet. Pretty simple. Um, face masks. Face masks and sanitization. We already talked about that. There's a little spot in there. Make sure you sanitize. Classroom contact, guys, basically I say, hey, be respectful. Now, here's what I want you to do. That second page, right? So the back of that first page, I want you to look right here on the classroom conduct. There are three things you need to pay attention to because I tell you what you need to bring to this class every single day. So when you come to class on Monday, this is what you need to have. You need to have one three-ring binder. That's where you're going to keep all the stuff in this class. One three-ring binder. You need to have either loose leaf paper or a notebook. 
when we do like criminal investigations and stuff, you're gonna have to have something to write it before you have a note. All right. And then last but not least, you need to bring your own writing. All right. We can't have everyone sharing writing utensils. I can't be doing it in a pen's way every day because I can't get them back. Right? If you have your hands all over a pen, I'm not gonna take that back and put that with the rest of my sandwich. Right? So you guys have to make sure that you bring something to write with every single day. Now to add to that list, I already told you, but make sure you have your Chromebook as well. All right. So the three things you need to have when you come to class, right? Kind of like your supply list that you got in elementary school. You need to have a three ring binder. You need to have a notebook. All right. And you need to have something to write with. Pretty sweet. Pretty simple. If you have trouble tracking that, any of that stuff, shoot me an email, right? I understand that sometimes it's like, hey, there could be two situations. Like, hey, Mr. Boyd, I couldn't, I couldn't get enough cash to buy this stuff. That's cool because I will find that for you. All right, as long as you shoot me an email and you make that happen, okay? Now, there also might be a situation like, Mr. Boyd, I worked all weekend. I couldn't get my hands on this stuff and I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get there because I don't have a car. That's cool, shoot me an email. I will work with you and we'll find a, we'll find a solution, all right? But just make sure I know about it so we can work together. All right. Um, our grading, uh, our grading policy, guys, you know what basic grading policy is. 90 to 100, make sure you don't play drives. Basically, you lay out right here if you're really concerned. But that's where you're going off the basic grading policy. Something to think about is retakes, all right? That's how things are handled a little bit differently in different classes, okay? Here's how I do retakes. Retakes are at my discretion. And what that means is that if you want to retake, you need to talk to me personally. So take, say you take a unit test, and you're like, boom, you know, I fall on that. I don't know what the heck went on, right? If you come to me and say, hey, Mr. Boyd, I want to retake, I'll say, okay, why do you think you did so bad on the first one? How are you going to do better on the second one? You're going to have to have a plan, concrete plan. This is how I'm going to do better. This is what I need. Nine times out of ten, if you come to me with a plan, I'm going to say, yeah, you can retake that test. Usually it will be a different version. And I'll say, yeah, and then you have to come and you take it on your own time. So if you ever need a retake, refer to the syllabus, but also understand that you need to make sure you know that at all times, okay, at all times, you can talk to me about making a retake. Things are gonna have to work out. All right. Um, contact, open door, um, all these things. Oh, late work, guys. If you turn in something late, okay, it's ten points off. It's, it's not ten points off. It's a ten percent deduction. I'm usually pretty pretty lax with that. I'm not a super stickler on that as long as you're turning in things um, in a reasonable timeline. Now, here's the thing. We understand here at Gish we got like formative work and we have assessments, right? Your formative work can't be turned in any later than like your unit assessment, right? So if there's like a little discussion post that's due for chapter one and you don't do it, and then you take your chapter, we already moved past when you take the chapter one test, we moved on to chapter two, you can't go back to that discussion post and turn that in. That was formative work. It's only worth 20% of the grade. You only took the test over that stuff, so it doesn't even really make sense to turn that in. Okay? So formative work from a unit cannot be turned in any later than the chapter test for that unit. Now, if you like miss a ton of class because hey, you were sick or something, you need to talk to me and we can work the plan out. Okay, so make sure to touch base. Um, your summative assessments, you can turn those in basically as late as the end of the semester to make sure because um, you can't have zeros for somebody of um, assessment grades. All right, last but not least, my contact, my email. Make sure that if you need to get in contact with me at all, shoot me an email. I would love to talk to you. We're going to practice that a little bit um, later on today. Course outline, that's basically how this is going to be structured. No worries. Um, if you're really concerned, you can look at that. Um, that might change a little bit as we move forward because sometimes it's like, hey, I can only get a guest speaker this day, and we're going to have to switch our plan up a little bit. We're not going to be here. We're going to kind of be very flexible on that. All right? All right. Last but not least, the last page. We talked about it. It's a big deal. This is your first homework assignment in this class. All right? You take this home. You need to sign it, your parents need to sign it. Not only does it say, hey, I read and I understand what's going on with the syllabus, but at the bottom it says, hey, I understand that this class is going to cover some graphic things. I've got a list there that tells you these are the things that are graphic that might be concerning. And you jump in and, uh, and you sign that so that everyone is good to go. All right? A quick five points. This is basically like a free grade. All you have to do is bring it into me, sign and ready to go. If your parents have any questions, they can always contact me, shoot me an email, or call me. All right, so guys, we finally got done with this whole long thing. All right, I know it's a big, long, boring issue. That's your syllabus. That's what you need to know. I right, keep that paper copy out, however, because we're going to start talking about Canvas, and we might discover a quick uh, free point 
uh, syllabus quiz. So here's what, I want, here's what I want us to do. With basically the remainder of our time, we're going to practice using Canvas. Now, I know you guys have been inundated with Canvas. I mean, you've been overwhelmed with all this stuff with Canvas, right? Because yesterday you got four classes of it. Today, I'm just going to kind of let you explore and check out what our class looks like on there. All right? So I need everyone to pull out your Chromebooks, all right? Because we're going to log into Canvas and take a look at what my class looks like on Canvas and how we need to navigate. Guys, once you get into Canvas and you click on my course, you'll know you're in the right spot because it will look like that. Guys, so make sure you get logged into Canvas. This is principal or foundation of law and public safety. Period 11. I know that's weird. Period 11, Mr. Boyd. All right. So now that we're in, let's take a look at this together. Guys, if you take a look, you should be on the home page. This is just like a, hey, welcome to class. Here's what you need to expect. Here's some of the different things. Now, as you're taking a look at our class page here, or our home page, you can see that over on the left-hand side, you have a bunch of different things, okay? Some of them are visible to you. Some of them aren't, okay? You should be able to see things like Google Drive, Folio, grades, quizzes, discussions, assignments, modules. Um, there's nothing in announcements yet, so you don't see that. Now. What you need to know about this course, guys, is that almost everything that we do is going to be laid out in the modules section of this course. So if we come over, uh, nine times out of 10, almost 100% of the time, if you're trying to access this course on Canvas, you hop in here and you click on modules. Once you're in the modules, you'll see it organized week by week. Hey, this is what we're doing. And then inside that week, I've got like a page that says, hey, here's our agenda for today and all this different stuff. So if you take a look up here, we have our first week module, inside the first week module, we have all of the different things that we talked about. Now, there are different icons on here. You've heard this, but I want to reiterate it. Here are your icons. This little icon right here means it's a web page. Okay, so you're going to hop in there, you're going to access the web page. These little icons right here, the paper clips, that means it's an attachment. If you click on that, you'll be able to download whatever is right there. All right, and last but not least, this little guy right here, this little rocket ship. That means it's a quiz, okay? And we're gonna work on that today. Now, if you click on first day, everyone click on first day for me. This is what you'll see for almost every day that we're in class. It's a page saying, all right class, here's what we're doing. Welcome, this is the topic we're talking about, and I lay out the agenda. Here's the cool thing about that. If you miss class for any reason, all you have to do is click on the, uh, the page for that day that you miss, and I tell you exactly what we did. So if you take a look up here, we have our welcome and attendance, our introductions, what is this class, our syllabus walkthrough, all of these different things, getting to know Canvas, that's what we're doing now, and then suggestions for the class playlist. That's how we're going to finish out today's class. So every single day, you'll be able to see what the heck's going on. Now, I also embed the PowerPoint that I use for that day. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that the PowerPoint that is up here, okay, or that I've been running up here, is embedded in there right now. So it might take a while to load because it's a Google Drive extension. Probably just not safe, but you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. All right. Now beyond that, so you figured out, hey, this is what we're doing on the first day. Here's the here's everything that's happening. Now if you back up and you go to our modules, under first day, I have all of the things that we have addressed for that day, right? So I have our foundation syllabus. So hey, just a quick question. If you lose this syllabus that you have in front of you between now and when you take it home tonight, how are you going to get another copy? Where can you find it? Canvas, right here. Okay? 
You hop over here on the canvas, click on that attachment, you can download it, fill it out, send it to me. No big deal, okay? So you have all of this stuff right here at your fingertips. Now uh, I've got my Get to Know Me PowerPoint, okay? All these attachments, notice how they're indented in. That means, hey, those all apply to what we did on the first day. All right, pretty sweet, pretty simple. Last but not least, you have a little quiz, okay? That's what we're gonna do to uh, kind of practice our syllabus knowledge. So, we are at 8.55 today. We get out at 9.10, so there is no better time for us to kind of explore Canvas and take a look. So here's what I'm gonna do. For the next about five minutes, I'm gonna throw some music on. I'm gonna give you time to look at our Canvas page, and during that time, you need to find the syllabus quiz, and you need to take the syllabus quiz. Now, here's a hint. What does everyone, or what should everyone have a copy of on their desk? The syllabus. You can literally just look at that, find the correct answer, and make sure you get five free points in this class. So you should be starting out with two assignments, 100% in this class. We're starting off on the right foot, right? So find that syllabus quiz, take a look. You guys can talk and, and, uh, and chat it up as you explore Canvas for a little bit. I'm going to give us probably, I'm going to start seven minutes from about right now. Okay, so you have seven minutes to get this done and check everything out. In this GFPS folder, you can access any. Oh, see, I can even find that. Or... So you go to Clever. Okay. Yep, and it should take us through there. Yeah, so if you take a look there, one thing I'm going to pay attention to though, because you have like, I did the same thing, is that whenever you're up here, you just click to make sure you're in the GFPS number. Sometimes it'll be oh and then you can't find it. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, so that's yeah, I think you can just click on that. Thank you. All right, ladies and gents, I'm going to give you one more minute to make sure you've taken that syllabus quiz. You've got those five free points ready to go. And we're going to jump into the last thing we're going to do for today. Um, and then we have to sanitize our desks, right? Like every other class before you leave. Right now, right now. I'm going to have you practice a kind of a skill that I want you to have. So, let's pause our music here for, for a bit. All right, so to finish out class here today, guys. So, one of the benefits of next year is you get to name the, the mannequin dummies that we have. Got it. All right. So if we take a look up here, guys, you did your Canvas stuff, you did your syllabus quiz, everything's good to finish out class today. Like I said before, one thing that I like to do is I like to have a classroom playlist. So all of my classes send me song suggestions. I find them, I put them on a class playlist on Spotify, and when we're chilling, like we're doing activities like that, or it's before class, I play some music so that it's not just some dead space and we're going to fall asleep. Okay? So we get to hear everybody's music taste, things get to be, uh, it be nice and, and, and smooth, and we get to make sure to have kind of that, uh, that background that keeps us going without having to worry about anything else. So here's what I want us to do. I want you to practice sending me an email. And there's two reasons why I want you to do this. Number one, so I can get your song suggestion. But number two, so you can have practice actually getting my right email. A lot of people mess up, and they type me an email at jboyd, right, at gips.org. It's jdboyd, okay? You can see it on the syllabus. When you type it in your address book, it should pop up. So for this last activity, I want you guys to open up your email. I want you to send me an email of one song suggestion. I mean, it could be multiple, but at least come up with one song suggestion, okay, for the classroom playlist. Now, one thing, it doesn't necessarily have to be clean if I can find a clean version of it, okay? If I can't find a clean version of it, then it can't go on the classroom playlist, right? Because what if Mr. Gilbertson walks in and, uh, you know, Little <laughs> is screaming, yeah, we don't, we don't want that. So make sure that uh, you guys give me a clean song suggestion and you shoot me that email really quick. Now, as you do that, double check you're sending it to the right thing. I'm going to throw some music on as you kind of close out class. Here's what I want us to do. Be looking at the, um, the classroom clock because at about 9, we're not going to do 9.05, we'll do 9.06, okay? At 9.06, I want you to start clearing your desk because we're going to do our whole uh, sanitizing Okay, so start sending me those emails, get some ideas. I'm pretty tired of listening to this uh, old class playlist. It's from last year, so I'm ready for some new songs. Give me some ideas. All right, I'm starting to get some suggestions. I like them. Keep rolling in. 